It's been quite a while since we went on any integration joy rides here on the channel. So here's one today. We're going to be integrating from 0 to 1 the dilogarithm of the square root of x. Which is a pretty fascinating problem and the solution development is pretty elegant as well. And there are actually a couple of ways you can approach this problem. One could be using the integral representation of the dilogarithm. And the other is the approach that I'm going to use in the video that I found quite satisfying. And that was using the series expansion for the dilogarithm, which is, of course, valid on our uh, interval of integration. So we can expand the dilogarithm of z as the sum over the positive integers n of z to the n divided by n squared. Now, this implies that the dilogarithm of the square root of x can be written as the sum over the positive integers n of x to the n by 2 divided by n squared. And this turns our problem of, uh, this turns our integration problem into an infinite series expansion problem, which I'm going to show you in just a few moments. So let's just call our integral here i for reference purposes. And using this series expansion, we can write i as the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over the positive integers n of x to the n by 2 divided by n squared integration with respect to x. And if you switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators, we have the sum over n of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n by 2 divided by n squared dx. And this n squared term is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating. So we can just pop this outside the integration uh, operator. So we have the sum over n of 1 by n squared times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n by 2 dx, which is, of course, quite trivial. This sorts out to the sum over n of 1 by n squared times x to the n by 2 plus 1 divided by n by 2 plus 1 with the limits being 0 and 1. So in the limit as x approaches 0, the entire thing collapses to 0. However, as x approaches 1, you just have a 1 in the numerator. So you're left with the sum over the positive integers n of 1 by n squared times 1 by n by 2 plus 1. So expanding using 2, we can write this as twice the sum over n of 1 by n squared times n plus 2. And all we need now is a partial fraction decomposition for this term here. So we need to come up with a partial fraction decomposition for 1 by n squared times n plus 2. So we can write this as a by n plus b by n squared plus c by n plus 2, which implies that 1 equals a times n times n plus 2 plus b times n plus 2 plus c times n squared. So if we start off by letting n equal to 0, and wait, that looks more like an eta, and the eta function is quite respected, so I'm not going to confuse n with eta. Although the rest of my handwriting is pretty horrible, but anyway, I think most of you, I mean, the regular viewers of the channel are pretty much used to it, and for the new viewers, I'm terribly sorry, but that's why I keep speaking as I write. Uh, I have to speak every single term so that you know exactly what I'm writing. Anyway, so for n being equal to 0, we have 0 plus 2 times b plus a 0 again, so this implies that b equals 1 half. Okay, cool. And if we let n equal negative 2, then we have 1 being equal to, again, 0 plus 0 plus 4 times c. So this implies that c equals 1 by 4. Again, really nice. And now we just need to determine a, and for that we can pick any arbitrary real number. So let's just pick an easy one. Let's pick uh, n equal to 1. Okay, so we have 1 being equal to a times 1 times 3. Plus the value of b is known now, it's 1 by 2 times 3, plus the value of c is also known, and times 1 squared is just 1, right? So this implies that a equals 1 by 3 times 1 minus 3 by 2 minus 1 fourth, and this should give you 1 by 3 times negative 1 by, no, 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 
It's negative 3 by 4. Okay, so the 3's cancel out pretty nicely, and you're left with A being equal to negative 1 by 4. So we have determined the coefficients A, B, and C, and we can now plug in these results. So we have I being equal to twice the sum over the positive integers N of negative 1 by 4 divided by N. Um, minus, no, it was a plus 1 half divided by n squared, and plus 1 by 4 divided by n plus 2. And if you just multiply out this 2 here, then we have the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 by 2n plus 1 by n squared, familiar term there, uh, plus 1 by 2 times n plus 2. Okay, cool. And to evaluate this infinite series, I'm going to just separate this term here because this is the familiar Basel identity. So we have the sum over the positive integers n of 1 by n squared uh, minus 1 half times the sum over the positive integers n of uh, 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 2. Okay, so we have a couple of theories over here, and one of them is pretty nice. I mean, this here is just the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 2, which sorts out to pi squared by 6, the familiar Basel problem, or the Basel identity, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, most of higher mathematics are due to Euler anyway. So we have pi squared by 6 minus 1 half of this sum that I'm going to call uppercase S. And this looks like a telescoping series. The structure is pretty much that of a telescoping series. So let's see what it evaluates to. And for that, I'm going to consider the finite sum, S sub uppercase N, of the sum over the integers from N equals 1 to uppercase N. Or I could just ditch the Ns and write this as K. Okay, the sum from, one, uh, from N equals 1 to N equals K of 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 2. And all we have to do is just expand the terms and see the beautiful cancellations that take place. So for n equals 1, we have 1 minus 1 by 3. Plus, for n equals 2, we have 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4. Plus, in similar fashion, carrying forward, 1 by 3 minus 1 by 5. Plus, 1 by 4 minus 1 by 6. Okay, we're beginning to see a pattern here. And let's go to the k minus 1 term now. So we have 1 by k minus 1 plus 1 by k plus 1. Uh, no, wait, it's a minus sign here. Plus 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 2. So we see here that negative 1 third and 1 third cancel out. And then we have a cancellation between negative 1 fourth and 1 fourth as well. And for the n equals 5 term, this is going to disappear, and so will the 1 by 7, 1 by 6 terms as well. So we see these cancellations taking place, and we're only left with this term of 1 plus 1 half minus 1 by k plus 2. So s sub k equals 1 plus 1 half is 3 by 2, minus 1 by k plus 2. And we're interested in the sum over all the positive integers n of 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 2, which is just the limit of s sub k as k approaches infinity. So as k approaches infinity, this thing here approaches 0. So we're left with the sum s being equal to 3 by 2. So plugging in these results, n equaled pi squared by 6 minus 1 half of the sum S, and this sorts out to a pretty nice looking result here after a really elegant and satisfying solution development. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the di logarithm of the square root of x being equal to pi squared by 6 minus 3 by 4. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.